reporting to you from our first annual Miles for Migraine Education Day. I'm coordinating the event today and we are thrilled with our attendee attendees. They're just breaking for lunch as you can see. They're having a wonderful fresh selection at lunch after just completing the morning session that was filled with some fantastic speakers and some really relevant information to our attendees and those watching Facebook Live. We have over 2,000 people um, touching base with us via Facebook and catching all the action right as it's happening. So we're absolutely thrilled about that. Shortly after lunch, we're going to start our breakout sessions. Each attendee will attend three sessions. They'll have a interactive yoga session, also a biomedical feedback session, and a group discussion. So we're thrilled there'll be a lot of movement, but it will give our attendees the chance to come together as a community and speak to one another, meet them, share what they think of the day. So we couldn't be more excited for our event today. Hi, I'm Shirley Kessel. I'm the executive director for Miles for Migraine. I'm back to let you know we are just wrapping up lunch. We had a fabulous morning with uh, topics and updates in medical treatment. Hope you got to see that. We had an update in mental health. And we also had a nice practice of mindfulness uh, based on the, uh, the history for mindfulness-based stress reduction. And uh, we had a fabulous, fabulous talk by Joanna Kempner, our keynote speaker, talking about uh, politics and health and gender bias. And I hope you will get to really go back and visit her talk and see some of the uh, photographs and informational information that she used about the history of where social stigma comes from. I'm here at uh, Lankanol Health Medical Center, part of the Mainline Health System, and we are going to move now into the afternoon where people will be rotating through group discussion with our psychotherapist, and they'll also have an opportunity to practice chair yoga and learn more about biofeedback. And following that, we will have two more talks, one from Dr. William Young from Jefferson, and he'll be talking to us about reducing stigma and increasing advocacy, and also Katie Golden, who is a patient advocate, will talk to us about what it's like to live with migraine. Thank you. Hi, I'm Katie McDonald. I'm the Director of Regional Programs and Operations for Miles for Migraine. I'm here in the uh, sponsor area, and we're just wrapping up lunch today. I just had lunch with some of our participants who seem to be having a great time today. I think people are really enjoying the presentations. I heard one woman say that she didn't think she could learn anything new about migraine, and lo and behold, she learned something new in each of the presentations so far this morning. We're looking forward to a great afternoon. Wow, welcome. A great group. How's the day been so far? Great. So I don't have a name tag, but my name is Esther. I'm last name is Reese Flam. Um, I have been teaching um, mindfulness and uh, yoga for um, the past 12 years. Um, and uh, my um, my sense is that yoga can uh, and mindful movement and breath can really help with um, uh, with the onset and some of the symptoms of migraine, and that's um, part of my conversation with Shirley has been around. How do we um, how do we include that in this day? So um, she invited me to come. So I wanted to demonstrate a little bit and have us practicing. Um, and I, first I wanted a sense of who has done yoga or some form of mindfulness in the past. All right, good. <laughs> okay. So I can skip over a whole lot in terms of um, what uh, the, ben the benefits are because I think just the fact that you're showing up is a sign that you um, so we're going to do a chair-based practice, although we'll do one thing next to the chair, okay? 
Um, and we'll start with Seated Mountain. And I, you notice that I took off my shoes. And one of the reasons for that is because um, proprioception, which is an important part of being able to self-regulate, um, it, it happens through, the, through um, contact with the ground and knowing where your feet are. So if you're OK with it, just try it out with socks. If you're feeling like uh, it's you know it's too much to take off my boots or whatever, that I understand, all right? So um, the feet are typically uh, hip distance apart. So you want this alignment from hips to knees to ankles. And what that does is help your body recognize I'm stable. I'm doing fine. I'm you know I I'm taking care of how I'm sitting. Okay. So. Um, Press down through the feet, feel a bit of activation in the knees, and I just like um, letting my knees know that I love them. So I can move a little rub. Good. And then I press down on the tops of my uh, femur at the hip crease and lift up through the spine. And um, basically the downward pressure invites um, a sense of lengthening through the spine. Great. Okay. Then slide the hands um, down without collapsing. Remember the, the, that sensation of length. Good. And tuck your chin slightly back, or just uh, remind yourself where the jaw hinges, and move it back. And what that does is um, uh, is help engage the back of the neck. Okay. And um, uh, and this might also be quite useful to remember um, when you're, um, I'm assuming, taking time at the computer um, or hunching over yourself cell phone, that um, that small movement, taking the jaw back, can free things up in the back. Okay. All right. Then just as transition breaths, inhale, Take the shoulders up to the ears with your breath, and exhale. Again, inhale, and release. And the third breath, inhale, and release. All right. Now widen through the shoulders, and you have a sense of um, in the upper body. Okay. Great. Bring the gaze down a few feet in front of you on the ground without bending the neck. Okay. And take a few of your own breaths, just a sense of um, getting acquainted with yourself from the inside out. So the breath is the conduit. Um, 
just notice what, whether you have any habituated response around migraine, around a headache that might be coming. You um, fill in the blanks for yourself on this. There might be a habit you have around how you hold the upper body. And just breathe into your awareness. And as you exhale, release the body a little more. Right? The longer exhale to relax the upper body without collapsing. Okay, so inhale, lengthen, 
and exhale. Bend your ankles and your knees and then fold forward. All right, great. So um, in yoga with the classic forward fold, often done with straight legs, I would uh, prefer that you do it with um, bent legs. Um, it's better for your spine. And then hold on to your elbows and release the torso onto the tops of your legs. So that's a big bend in the knees that we're looking for. So we're releasing so that your, your belly might be touching the, um, the thighs. Gently rock from side to side. Okay, good. Now bring your hands to your hip crease. Okay, that spot right there, that spot right where the femur bone comes to the hip. And gently nod the head and gently shake the head. And let tension, okay, this forward bend is really about releasing tension in the back of the neck area, right in here, okay? Should feel good. So if this is in any way straining you, um, some of my students do this with um, while they're sitting, but I wanted to try it standing because there's also a bit of a strengthener involved. So right in here, breathe, nod the head, shake the head. Yeah, I'm just coming around to give you a bit of a tactile sense of what I'm talking about. This area right in here. Okay, really nice. All right, yeah. Then slowly, now bring strength back into the legs and lift to horizontal spine. Take a full breath at horizontal. Take the arms out into airplane. And then just unhinge at the hips, coming up, being in this wide standing stance. Yeah, beautiful. Bring the palms together, and hands come down. All right, come back to your chair. And what we'll do is um, one more that, uh, motion that I like. Take the arms out to horizontal, and again, sorry, this is a little bit tight with me, it's good. And exhale, um, give yourself a hug. Okay, and then, uh, creep your fingers to the scapula, okay? Um, and can you feel the tops of the, um, the uh, uh, shoulder blades? And just come to this area and massage. Just bring your fingers to whatever spots you have. This can be really tight in this area, okay? And lift the elbows. Play around with this. Okay, good. And then take two, relax, take two full breaths. And the shoulders sink down. And again, inhale. Arms come out once more, and now take the other arm on top, okay? As you exhale, and it's come, and then walk the fingers to the shoulder blades, and creep them, you know, this, I mean, this is, might feel a little weird and a little creepy, but um, you can get to areas of the shoulder blades here that can feel really tight. Okay, and this might, again, help with some relief in this area. Good. Now uh, rest the arms, relax the shoulders, take a full breath. Shoulders. 
bring the hands to the outer edges of your chair. Okay, good. Now press into your hands, press into your um, hips, and lift up through the spine and through the front upper neck pec area without dropping the head back, okay? Lift the chin, but no, don't drop. And breathe here. And release. Bring the forearms onto the legs. Lengthen. And release. And let the head rest. Long, smooth breath. Relax the back of the neck. Bring the hands to the tops of the knees. Inhale, come on up. Close the eyes, relax the shoulders, coming back to seated mountain posture. the yoga I've done it before to try to relax and help the headaches and this session was really nice the session was great it gave me some ideas for some emergency yoga that I can use when I feel a um, migraine coming on it was great very relaxing I feel a lot better hi um, so welcome to biofeedback uh, and thanks for coming to Migraine Day. So I don't know how many of you have heard about using biofeedback to treat migraines. Has anyone tried it? Yeah. So I think it is something every migrainer should try. But more than try, you should go to somebody who will do an assessment first. Because there's a certain type of uh, person with a certain type of migraine that seems to do much better with biofeedback than others. And that's because of the magic pencil. So all of you have a pencil, if you hold it up and go like this, if your pencil changes color, your hands are warm. And that's a good thing. So there's a great many people with migraine that do something called vasoconstriction. The blood vessels in their hands constrict whenever their nervous system becomes hyperactivated. So if you look at this sheet I gave you here, this is the automatic or autonomic nervous system. And on one end, 
is wax on, wax off, relaxed, called the parasympathetic nervous system. Now on the other side is our sympathetic nervous system, SNS. That is the puppy upper <laughs> energizing system in the body, and it's automatic. It automatically happens. And how does it automatically happen? It reads, number one, your emotions. And number two, your cognitions. But a cognition with an emotion of emergency or threat attached to it gets your whole sympathetic system going. And when the sympathetic system goes, we go into that, you know, fight or flight response, you re release uh, chemicals, hormones, and for many, many migraineurs, they vasoconstrict. You don't get a migraine in a vasoconstricted state. You get the migraine when you vasodilate rapidly after a prolonged period of vasoconstriction. So you'll get your migraines at night, on the weekend, when you're relaxing. That's when the migraines hit. And people say, why? I'm not stressed. I was stressed, but I'm not stressed now. It's because the migraine comes on with the release of chemicals that happens with very rapid dilation of blood vessels that have been very, very constricted. One theory, but I'm telling you, I've been working biofeedback 30 years. This is great. If you're a vasoconstrictor, you should definitely try some biofeedback. What is biofeedback? Biofeedback is fancy, expensive equipment like this, or biofeedback is cheap equipment like this, or biofeedback is stuff like this. These are stress squares. Here, why don't you hand some of these out? So some of you might be familiar with the mood ring. The mood ring uh, was black if you were angry and blue if you were very happy. And I'm like, well, no, I'm blue and I'm very angry. <laughs> So it has actually nothing to do with your mood. The uh, stress square simply tells us about the temperature of your hand. And so if your uh, hands are cold um, and you don't have blood moving through your hands, um, you uh, are, are in the, the black, as we say. You're vasoconstricted. Can anyone figure out like, why the hands would want to do that? Like, Why would the hands vasoconstrict with fight or flight? Why? Well, it does, you, it's, that's a great answer. You, you do get more blood to certain areas, but that's not why you vasoconstrict, because you have to think about it. You're getting no nutrients, no oxygen, to, which is really not good, right? You know if you put a tourniquet on, you're supposed to release it in, what, like every 20 minutes or so? But the body does this, and it's part of the fight or flight response, because they, we fought with our hands and ran away with our feet. So those are the two things that vasoconstrict when there's a sense of emergency. Sense of emergency? Vasoconstriction. I don't want to fight you, win, and then bleed to death. Or run away from you without my PF flyers and no streets and bleed to death. Like you look back and oh, trail of blood, mine. Oh, I'm dead. You know? The other thing we do automatically is we clench our teeth. Right? Ready to bite? Giving you the signal? Back off. The other thing we do is our shoulders go up to protect our juggler vein. Because if the animal goes through my juggler vein, I'm dead. So all of this equipment is to tell you, feedback to you, if you've arrived at a very relaxed parasympathetic state. Now Steve, he's a student at Widener. Widener has a doctoral program in biofeedback, and he's going to demonstrate a very simple piece of equipment called HeartMath or EM Wave, and let's, uh, we're going to put him on what's called the Coherence Coach. Uh, yeah, you've got to put your sensor on. So that little sensor goes on his ear, and let me just get right here. And the coherence coach, we're going to listen to this, is going to mention three things, and Steve is going to work on breathing. So we know from yogas, uh, there you go. Hello, I'm your coherence coach. I'm here to teach you the quick coherence technique and show you how to improve your coherence scores with your M-Wave. Let's get started. The quick coherence technique is a simple three-step process. I'll take you through each step. First, down here it's saying he's in area. blue and green area. That's good. Red, not so good. Got it? Now the second step is adding heart-focused breathing. Maintain your heart focus. And while breathing, 
Imagine that your breath is flowing. So he's saying basically mindfulness, focus your mind. Mindfulness we know works really well. Alter your breath, slow it down. While maintaining heart focus and heart breathing, follow the ball. So this is just a breath pacer. There are a lot of apps you can get on your phones. Slow down your breath, about seven breaths a minute. There's a whole physiological reason why slow breathing slows you down. Third and most important, an emotional shift. Right. Using the breathing pacer to guide you, try to feel a positive So I'm going to turn coherence co co coach off and just look at this pattern. This is a beautiful pattern. I can't do that. That's great. He's got 100% green. Now, he's at a baby level. If I put him at a harder level, he might not get green. But that's a beautiful pattern. This is not his breath. This is actually his heart. This is beats per minute of his heart. And it's a very cool thing. Of course, I teach this, and it takes me 40 hours of teaching. Um, so I can't do anything in 20 minutes, and, but I only, I'm only eight minutes in. This is really great. But basically, I'll tell you a little bit about what, what this cardiovascular dance, which is so cool. If you shut your mind off, so this is an electrical center. We're three-brained creatures. Here, I knew it in my heart. I knew it in my gut, right? I know my heart tells me, my gut tells me. So we have three brains, and actually there are three neural networks, three places that have neurotransmitter receptors, the gut, the heart, brain. So he's saying, get out of your head, mindfulness. Stop the chatter, the monkey mind, right? Focus on the area of your heart, the, the feeling, and then start a, a slow breath. The slow breath is all about energy metabolism. When you breathe slow, all of these little cells in your body go slow too. So you're a colony of cells, and those cells use oxygen and glucose to make energy. So would everyone inhale and let it out slowly. If you do about three of those, it's going to slow everyone down inside of you. All those cells are going to slow down. They have to because they don't have enough oxygen to make papillonar energy. And then down and relax. Relax your shoulders on the exhalation. So just like yoga, and some of you do yoga, right? All of you are doing what's called hatha yoga, the yoga of the body, relaxing your muscles. But then there's pranayama yoga, the yoga of the breath. You could get control of your breath. When um, migrainers usually are, um, have nervous systems that are very sensitive, you respond. Uh, not only do you respond to environment, environmental sensitivity, but you, you, there's a tendency for migrainers to be somewhat perfectionistic, driven. In other words, their, their nervous system makes you more nervous. It's just the way you do life. It's a little, believe it or not, it's different. We're all a little different, right? So your nervous system goes into this very, very fast gear. And to facilitate that, your cells go, okay, like what's your name? Brittany. Brittany. Say, so, Brittany, we got it. Emotionally, we got what you're saying. We're going to help you out. We're going to produce more energy. How are they going to produce my energy? They're going to start breathing faster. How are they going to breathe faster? Go upper thoracic. These muscles act like a billows. <laughs> if you're running, use them. Not if you're sitting doing work. Use the diaphragm. Diaphragm is a thick respiratory diaphragm, thick muscle down here, very slow, slow like an elephant, right? So, so, so in a sense, this sympathetic drive is something you're causing through your emotions, your thoughts, and what your body's doing. So that's heart math, a great little tool. This is another really great little biofeedback tool. So you can come to me. I'm, I'm like a coach. I'm a coach that will eventually kick you out of the office and say, do it at home. Use some of these things. This is just a little hand temperature thing, 25 bucks. And here it's just measuring my hand temperature. Anyone have an idea what my hand temperature should be? 
Give me a wild guess. Should my hand temperature be uh, 32 degrees? No. You want to try it? What should it be? 98.6 is my inner body core temperature. So my hand temperature, if there's a lot of blood flowing through my hand, should be somewhere around 90 degrees. Okay, now this is a little slow, because 25 bucks, not $2,000 like my equipment. But I'm at 87.5, 87.8, good. And this would be a great little thing for some of you to work with. The idea is not just to get to learn how, what you need to do to turn on the parasympathetic, to get yourself out of sympathetic, but also to be able to sustain that. We want to create a more stable platform in any migrainer. I work a lot with pain disorders. It's the same thing. If we can calm things down, you will not feel your pain as intensely. Calm things down in the brain. This is EEG biofeedback, or sometimes called neurofeedback. He has a little device. This is like $200 device. Now, again, my equipment is thousands of dollars, but this is a little home trainer. It can do a certain amount of things. So let's see if we can get some alpha. We want alpha, and what else do we want? What, what brainwave do we want? Do we want fast beta? Oh, he gets excited with it. Well, that's good. <laughs> you can get excited with fast beta. Uh, let's see if we have a connection. We never know. Oops. Uh, oh, you didn't turn it on. I don't know. I don't oh, he doesn't know how to turn it on. My students don't know everything because if I told them everything, they would think they don't need me anymore. <laughs> let, let me see. There's a switch. There he goes. Now he's uh, turned on. <laughs> and he's plugged in. And we'll see if we can connect. And I think we got it. If not, we'll do a demo at my office. Nip. Well, we did, we did practice with this, but of course, on the day of, when I'm still breathing, wax on, wax connect, and just just put that. I think we're connected. We'll try. Ah, uh, nope. Okay. Uh, it's not going to happen. So anyway, brainwaves won't happen. But do you think I want your brain, the speed of your brain to be fast or slow? Slower. Does anyone know what their, the, the names of the brainwaves are when they go slow? Delta, you're asleep, unconscious. Theta, meditative state, alpha, kind of just staring at a dot in the wall. <laughs> What's after alpha? Beta, right. Beta sounds a little puppy upper, right? So beta is you're working, your brain is going, firing a little faster because you're told it has to do work. And then there's a faster, the beta goes faster and faster based on work you have to do or emotions attached to that work, right? So right now I'm talking to you and I could actually be in alpha. I could be in beta or if I'm scared, nervous, apprehensive, if I really worried that this didn't work, I don't care. This is technology. It's not people. I want people to work. Technology doesn't always work. I'm not, it, it doesn't phase me. Now, part of why it doesn't phase me is because I spent about a year training myself on biofeedback. <laughs> Learning how to be productive, perfectionistic, and driven like I am, but to stay in a nice, relaxed state while I do it. Easy peasy? Easy peasy. Right. Okay, so let's uh, get some of you on your thermal devices. Uh, so who wants to take this? And who knows they have cold hands now? Does anyone know, want to try to warm them up? Okay, so, so, so even if you start at like 90 degrees, yeah, give it to somebody. And does anyone want to try out this um, heart math? Breathe in, come on up. Yeah. So this is mostly demo. Um, so just like yoga, we have um, Hatha yoga is the yoga of the body. We want the body to be relaxed. So we have surface EMG, uh, electromyograph, biofeedback that tells us if a muscle is tight or relaxed. The muscles that you tend to tighten with the stress response or the jaw, right, for biting and the TMJ. 
Shoulders go up to protect your juggler vein, so somebody doesn't, you know, right? And um, so what else gets tight? Your, your, your neck, your, the whole back area, right, right. And for some people, the frontalis muscle, right? The, so a lot of times when people are listening to me, I'm talking to them or my students, I go up and I go like that. And I say, you don't need this to hear me. So don't, don't you always sometimes feel like if you go like this, you're going to understand things better? Well, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Uh, okay. So we're going to, Steve, you want to hook her up? Put that right on her ear. And we'll run the coherence coach. And this right in the back of the earring. Good. So what you're going to do I mean, is just breathe in, breathe out. Can you see the... Um, so come up a little bit here. And we'll run the coherence coach again. And just try to follow what he says to do. You're at 94 degrees? That's great. Can go up? So this is breathe in and then breathe out. Now for some people this could be too slow. We could make it a little faster at first and then slow it down. Could you go up? Go up. Yeah. That's great. Ah, now look at this. Here she's in blue and green. And if we look at the pattern, this is really beautiful. Now you see how her pattern isn't a perfect pattern yet, but it's good enough for some blue and green. So let's look at her pattern. It's a little different than Steve's. And all this means is that her mind was also very active while she was doing this. So that it was going up and down but every time the brain gets involved, the electricity of the brain, it disrupts the electricity in the heart. So the cardiopulmonary dance is this. When I inhale, the heart will beat faster. When I exhale, the heart will beat slower. It's called heart rate variability. And the healthier you are, the more variability you have. If you have a heart rate of 60 beats a minute, you should not be beating once per second. You will have a cardiac event. <laughs> when you inhale, the heart says it has to distribute oxygen. It beats fast. Exhale, it beats slow. And if, if it's doing that, it's telling us your mind is quiet. All right, so hope you enjoy using your own little biofeedback pencils. That's good. And um, next group is ready to come in. So thank you so much for coming.